Um, this is, uh, I think, a very, very beautiful, beautiful thing. My dear Palestinian children, did you know your ancestors built the Great Pyramid? They called it an altar to the Lord. You may wonder how that could be. Well, on the other side of the flood, before Mars poured her waters upon the earth, and did you know there was an American carpenter who one day built a telescope and, he's, and was the first man to see the two moons of Mars, Deimos and Phobos, which means pure and terror. Those two numbers there in the concordance is the age difference between my sister and I, which means fear and terror. His name was, I think, Asenath Hall, so they called it the Mars Hall Lights. But they were named in ancient times. So, where your ancestors lived was Canaan. Your father's Mother's Now, I want to answer this part of the question. How could that be? <clears throat> On the other side of the flat, there were giants. in those days. Four angels that mated with Alice. Then there were the virgins who waited 
Portail, look at Represented by. The most honorable of men. Okay, now on a duplicate slide. The only difference between man and an angel is immortality. Salvation of the world depends on Palestine. Who are the first nation? who has suffered because of the Zionist rabbis who know who you are Okay, now.
uh, Esna's hole and the Mars lights are combined for the Mars hole lights and that is my name in Greek 698 And the number of times I am is found in the Bible. Is that easy? cannot come to the earth without a mother or father. So we have the NASA website itself saying a red blood lunar uh, eclipse occurred on the 3rd of April, year 33 AD. Now on the terrible day of the Lord, the Joel prophecy, etc., um, predicts that the moon will turn red and then the sun will turn dark. So the death on the cross, the moon turned red. And on the 14th of November, the moon will block out the sun. And from where I was born, <clears throat> in 33 AD, on the 3rd of April, the moment of the cross, the um, sun was directly over my birthplace. And starting here, and it became redder and redder and redder and as it got to its reddest point about there which is directly over my birthplace so on the day of Pentecost the Apostle Peter reminded the people of Jerusalem that a blood lunar eclipse was visible on April 3rd 33 AD worldwide now, <clears throat> this is the 3rd of April 33 AD and you see how it's turning red. And as I progress that forward, Not too fast. See the line coming across it. Well, one that's from our perspective, straight up and down, right now, it's very close, right? But there, that gives us the numbers 14.7. Three, four, thirty-three, seven, fifty-six, thirty-nine seconds p.m. Four, four, thirty-three at one forty-nine, thirty-five a.m. Four, zero, four, thirty-three at seven forty-one, zero two a.m. This is the moment of my death. We have all these craters on the moon that can be read like a book. The moon was formed when the earth gave birth to her daughter. 
men. It's what inspired Shakespeare. So these are all numbers you can read. What it's pointing out is Iran is prepared to go to world war to liberate you. Very noble thing to do. I say, just tell them I'm here. So as yet, they haven't done it, as far as I know. I'm telling you. So that's what happened at the moment I died on the cross. That was directly over Australia. Now we go back to this other program here. And uh, so we're at 10, so I'll go down to uh, the end. Okay. Let's put it back in there. Now, when Cook was a lieutenant, he sailed around the Cape and then over to um, 5,000 miles from the South Pole. Because your ancestors, who were the angels that didn't fall, that remained as gentlemen, the line of Shem. And this is why they are trying to persecute you now because they have held back the truth and changed history to deny your mother, Asherah. In the Bible it's full of the names been changed to groves and they cut down the groves around the temple and the altar to God, which was a jar. It's my soul. So in this day and age, <clears throat> we have weapons. And the weapons I'm using, of course, is truth. And what I'm talking about here is this is the area south that he reached Antarctica after being in Tahiti, where he sighted on the 30th of August 1769, just 48 days later. We can determine by sailing at just five miles per hour, he would have reached the 7111 latitude and returned over halfway to New Zealand, 5,500 miles away, arriving 89 days after Tahiti, covering 62 miles a day, or 2.57 miles per hour. So we have the latitude and longitude where the sighting of the comet took place. and we're allowing for the Easter Lewins. We can easily calculate with our supercomputers today. This is what they're holding back from the Palestinian people, that you are the direct descendants of the angels that mated with the righteous women. Now, what we have is a red moon it's directly over Australia. There's the latitude and longitude of it. That's how far it is to the, in kilometres to the Earth. That's from centre of the moon to centre of the Earth. This is the daughter, and that's the mother. Mother Earth, right? Not Father Earth, Mother Earth. The father plants a seed and lives to tell another story. So this is why conception in women is all determined by the moon and uh, 
that type of thing. <coughs> so we have a latitude of 33.55052 south by 151.12267, which is that longitude there passes right through where I was born and was contained in a crib for uh, 942 days. Now, the importance of that is the moon turned red and on that moment I was conceived on the other side of the earth in 1944. That's the heartbeat of the mother passing on her genes to her son and daughter. Here. Yeah. So then the battle was on. So I never forgot that uh, I came here as a child. So there it is at uh, moment of death and of course you got to allow two days for the resurrection. It's 2,000 years. And it gives you the same date in uh, 1944 that my father and mother conceived me as my father Joseph conceived in his wife, Mary, my mother. Now, by uh, measuring to El Gigante, now Cook had gone down to 7111 latitude. This is 71 feet 11 inches long. Beside it is a statue that's huge that Cook. Oh, this is the Marshall Islands. Uh, it's a uh, thousand nautical miles from Tuvalu. This is inhabited. It also has the rarest um, coral on Earth, and it was used in Easter Island and the eyes, which they are still there, uh, in the priest's eyes, which were put out, if you might recall. The latitude, of course, is 77, that's me. 888, well, that's me. 171, that's me. 11, that's me. And 69, that's me. Shredder Terrain. 11th. 7111, that's the length of the statue on Easter Island. That the priests can no longer see because their eyes have been put out. Now, under the Oh, this is a little island. There's people living there. It's a, it is a first pass international date line. And it's 8.88 .88 miles long and 5.55 miles wide. And it's uh, 1,000 nautical miles to Marshall Island. It's called Tava Alu. Tiny, beautiful little thing like this. Look, look at the shape of it. Wonderful. Top of a volcano. So I'm telling you how to read creation because your mother and I did it. And that is passing over that this block here is the one that's changing from that to that. Right? It hit the brightest red right here. Now this is 888 miles long, New Zealand. That's Jesus. Right? And then up here is Marshall Island, which is a thousand, which is a Lord, which is God, above wisdom, 999, to the tiny island I just showed you with people living on it. Couldn't see any vehicles there. Why would you want it? So, you then measure from there to where I was born, and it gives you the answer.
then we have this insanity that your children have to deal with. It's incredible. This is in the West. You don't even get a chance to read this stuff because the, the Jews have got you totally fenced off. They want to kill you. They can't kill you. All they've got to do is recognise your mother and father. And that's it. Game over. So they want to stop that. Right? So let's go up a little bit. There's the Marshall Islands. That's the length of the El Gigante statue. That's these little people out in the middle of nowhere. This is uh, how you read. That's El Gigante sitting right there. And a line around the earth through it is uh, spills out. It's a thousand miles, which means God, to the first inhabitants past the earth, rotating eastward. 5.55 miles wide, and it's 4,000 kilometres from my rebirth location, which is 105 Rothschild Avenue. Now, this number here, when you go in Greek and so forth, it means 5,000. So there is a scripture in the New Testament where there is 4,000 pieces of fish and 5,000 pieces of something else. That's a mathematical thing. Let me go up, we see um, at 9.42 p.m. the moon was directly over Jerusalem on April 3rd. So it had gone from red when it was over here over Australia. When it's gone around here uh, the red was dying off. So there's many things that Jesus said that thought it could be written. Well, that's what I'm doing. Isn't it? Now, yeah, this one here is, uh, I think it's my height. in cubits times 1944 is the height of the pyramid. Something like that. Now, um, what's happening here is the position of the sun, etc., and the moon, we can determine at the exact moment. And it is saying by the distance to the moon from passing through the earth through that exact point, the Christ point, gives you that number. And it means not inhabited. Then it says, Emi T, if not somewhat, accepted the Aboriginal. I don't count them. So they're not counting you either. So with this Starry Night program, this wonderful thing you children have no idea uh, appears to you to be a godlike thing. Of course it is, because I just get people to build it. Now there's 36,000 denominations in the Christian world, so they're all insane. This is the location of... Uh, the moment, this is all dark here, that when it was about here, you could see it from Jerusalem. Now, the earth has been thoroughly uh, hypnotised by the sickest uh, Jewish system that money can buy. If you can dream it up, they're going to do it. Now, at that moment that I died on the cross, this lunar eclipse was happening over Australia, over my cot, my little baby. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did through him in your midst, 
as you yourself also know. Acts 2, 14 to 22. This is uh, what was spoken by the prophet Joel. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Now other versions says terrible day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm talking about you all in Palestine. All your babies there. Don't worry about your adults, they're all mad. Obviously, praying their way to God does not work, otherwise they would be saved. On the day of Pentecost, the Apostle Peter reminded the people of Jerusalem that a blood lunar eclipse was visible on April 3rd, 33 AD worldwide, which it was. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. Heed my words. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs which God did through him in your midst as you yourself also know. He's talking to you right now. This is the first time you heard about it, right? That's what it is. So, it's right over Australia. You get all this off uh, NASA website. It's too late now, it's out there. This is what's all predicted by the prophets. So that didn't happen. I'm sending it backwards. Okay, send it back. Send it backward. Yeah, that's not work. So the importance of this is that when this was happening, it was going through time. My time and your time is two different things. It's only two days for me. And in that time, the little babies, like who you are, have to catch up. So we've got a... Uh, let's make a duplicate slide of it. So little children in Palestine are seeing this for the first time to them. It's absolutely wonderful. The physical. Now it's gone over to the, uh, the right side, which is, if you're writing it in Arabic, you'd go this way. Uh, but the computer did that. I didn't do that. This is uh, some of the things that happened all of my life. Now I was trying to talk about this here. So before the flood, the people of Canaan had a mother and a father. 
And this is the bringing forth of the seed of uh, the angels, the good angels, through Noah to Shem. That's why the Jews today, who are not Jews, they say they are, but they're not. They call themselves the Semites. They're not. The Kazars. And I have condemned them all to death um, for what they have done to you. Now, the question is, if I was to hand judgment over to you, what would you do with the Jews in a court of law where you can determine the punishment, but those who determine the punishment must be in 100% agreement to carry out the sentence. And you select people to do that for you. When all the facts are presented by me and anyone else before a world court, this is what the Jews have done. This is why they were kicked out of 80 countries. This is why they've been murdering you. Now, I have sworn I will destroy utterly every synagogue, every rabbi, from off the face of the earth into the bottomless pit from whence they came.
Sitte fast. This is drawn by a chap. The Cook Expedition. So, Cook and a small native child then. Poor man, he went mad. He caught something. His uh, shipmates left him uh, on shore in Tahiti where a uh, hostile tribe uh, chopped him to pieces. So they murdered him. This is a replica of the ship they assume it looked like. Now Cook was meticulous. Uh, he measured this and wrote it down his ship log. And of course, um, this is the number. That is the age difference between my grandfather and I in days. 23, uh, 2, 2, 9. So designers have known precisely because they've just got stolen all the books of wisdom. They, they know precisely who I am. So they say, we're going to forbid him in here. Now, this is hundreds of years old. We're going to forbid Christ. They know he's coming as a man, right? Of course they've got it. Came the last time as a man, didn't it? Now, the Earl of Pembroke were marshals. Uh, uh, it was launched on uh, June 19, 1764 uh, from the uh, whaling port of Whitby in North Yorkshire. Now, your children would, wouldn't know any, anything about this. It is another world. But it's evil. It's all run for evil. So you have been protected from it by the Israelis doing this to you, just horrors they're doing to you, of course. They are, in fact, uh, preparing paradise for you. Because you have to go back to your Canaanite religion of your forefathers from Shem, Noah, righteous men. So that's your bloodline. All right, so uh, the Whitby cat. Look those numbers up, you see. And you can read them in a dictionary that has all the words of the Bible in it, showing where the origin of the word came from and what other meanings it might have in association with other words. So the Bible, doesn't matter what it says, when you read the earth, you're reading it from this what's called a strong concordance. American uh, men did it in 1830, 100 of them, under James Strong. Now, we come to the, the numbers of a comet here. Messier Comet was spotted by Cook, he wrote it down. August the 30th. This is 1.011 years after leaving, that's my birthday. Or backwards, my mother's birthday. Leaving England August 26, 1768. Now, when we add 88888 days to that, it's January 11, 2013, my 69th birthday, which is, as I've shown you before, is Marshall Island. It's So 
So from this little tiny island here, which has got these numbers in it, that's Jesus and that's Christ, that's a thousand nautical miles Now, as I've shown you before, what this was, it is now missing. So, is that one there? Thousand nautical miles. This is the uh, eclipse that started at the point of death over New Zealand which is 888 miles long which is Jesus and Greek past Marshall Island which is at 77888 degrees <laughs> so as the crucifixion is occurring the moon is directly over Australia and then that reveals the story of uh, pinpointing exactly by this moment here which was when I was conceived and the present date 9.42 days old 9.42 miles from where I was born, at the same point where the moon is pointing at. Which is that longitude there. So that's at the moment of conception with a time between 33 AD and 1943. Right. 1910 years. So if you go to your Bible and you look up 1910, Revelation, it takes you straight in to God coming back with a new name. God came as Jesus. Gabriel spoke to Muhammad. As he spoke to Mary, he spoke to Joseph, my unnatural father. Jews try to change that from being a Holy Spirit. So therefore I wouldn't be related physically to my father who was the son his name was uh, what was your name again? Joseph Ben Jacob I did forget you know Nobody's perfect. So, um, I send these letters off to um, try to at least to uh, these wonderful men in. Um, Iran. So they're not by by dismantling this thing as wonderful as it is. Um, they could have kept it quiet by not drawing attention to it, but by destroying it, they drew attention to it. And dimensions were written down by Cook in a ship's log.
So this is the mysteries that are in the islands around the earth. All sorts of mysteries like this. This is unique. Um, it shows a giant statue coming out of the uh, side of a mountain. And that is, the length of it is 31 feet, 11 inches. And that's how far Cook went down to uh, Antarctica when he was stopped by a wall of ice. And that was uh, September the 11th, 1769. Now the area of the island is 63.1, so that goes right back to the very man that predicted that uh, Iran will save you from these monsters. As said, this is how big it is. Now right beside it is... Uh, weirdest of things and that is there's another statue with an, you can see the head and neck I'll just flick through these uh, you can come back to them I'm just talking about these numbers here um, uh, let's see it's here somewhere okay now <coughs> That is clearly a face of a woman and a smaller body than the biggest statue, which is 7111, which Cook was sent back here in 1774, I think it was. And he sat here, mounted his cannons on here, and he started blasting away the nose and the forehead and the, uh, the breasts and uh, part of the arms, or most of the arms. But down in here you'll find cannonballs. Now the point being, that if you was going to carve this huge statue, which is 242.4 tonnes, it's got a sliver underneath that holds it in place. All you do is a, a volcano could erupt and this would wobble and it would come loose. Now, if it happened, would it raise up by itself? Or would it bring its Asherah with him? Because clearly you wouldn't build that there if you were cutting it out the side of the mountain to build a statue here. Because then that's in the way to get past there. So it was in its perfect shape. It was, it was the twins, if you like, mother and father coming out of the Canaanite god who has gained the victory. Of course, the Canaanites are descendants of Seth. That's where righteous people come from. So, they're looking for the 888 statue. Well, as I was saying before, the jaw It is too difficult to get rid of. The same as that. Right? If you started blasting at that, you're going to waste a lot of shot. But you can pick this off. You pick the nose there. And then you get, get a reasonable shot off here. Take off the forehead. Well, that's what they've done here. But you said there's a big ear stuck out there. You know? Yeah, well, I don't have to. Uh, so where is this 888 statue? Well, of course, it's the one next door. On the right hand of God. Coming back. To take back what the real religion was from the descendants of Seth. She was probably pregnant in their eyes and was in truth.
bearing twins. Ballerina. In the um, internet now, they've changed the Harrison clock to another clock. Where they never mentioned the Harrison clock until I mentioned it. Your mother Ashra. So you can imagine what these are here. If you get a close look, you find that they are slightly rounded where the shells, cannonballs hit. They fire the cannonballs and they bounce up the hill. Then they'd go and pick them up again, bring them back. Had lots of powder, but they lost some. No, it wasn't. Six fifty seven. That is the uh, nuclear fusion rate of the sun and how many times the word Lord is found in the New Testament. Now Asherah has judged the Jews as a mother and there is no way they're going to survive. Unless they repent. Rabbis can't repent. Moses forbade the Israelites entering the promised land, which is Canaan. They wanted it so bad, they couldn't have it. They weren't righteous enough. 
But shortly after he died, they kept on writing as if it was him. Like they do with Obama. I mean, it's total insanity. Let's see if I can find it. so much. Uh, a few nights ago, everybody was reminded just what a lucky man I am. Malia and Sasha, we are so proud of you. And yes, you do have to go to school in the morning. And Joe Biden, thank you for being... This was uh, a letter I was putting together to fax to... Uh, I have ever hoped for. And being <sighs> a and loyal friend. Chairwoman, delegates, I accept your nomination for President of the United States. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. The government is working under extraordinarily difficult conditions. Many communications are down and remain and many people uh, remain unaccounted for. The scale of the devastation is extraordinary as I think all of us are seeing on television, and the losses are heartbreaking. Now, this is uh, December the 21st, 2012, which hasn't happened yet. Uh, if you look up to the right, you see this here. Uh, when they change the lighting, that becomes the devil's head. Then you got the Pentagon. This is the devil worship. Now this is prepared, um, I think it was January 2010, because there's all these underground 
facility has been built uh, by simply printing money and looking at the world. Uh, trillions upon trillions of dollars are built in these tunnels. And I've been destroying them by asteroids coming to the Earth. Now, they think that these planets that are coming back into the solar system are rogue. But in fact, they're all work for me. And uh, what I'm doing is uh, taking out where they're underground. If you're sick of hearing me approve this message, uh, believe me, so am I. I destroyed the tunnel. I pledged America's continued commitment to the government. This is imitation static lives and deliver relief. Radiation and all the long -term facilities are down. Television not working. It is absolutely essential that these efforts are well coordinated with the United Nations, which continues to play an essential role, and with the many international partners and aid organizations that are now on the ground. Area Search and rescue efforts continue to work, pulling people out of the rubble, out of the rubble often under extraordinarily difficult circumstances. Food, water, and medicine continues to arrive along with doctors like static and lines, aid workers. The entire world stands with the government and the people. We all see the common humanity that we share. And as the international community continues to respond, like, I do like believe that America there, has a continued demons. responsibility to act. Our nation has a unique capacity to reach out quickly and broadly and to deliver assistance that can save lives. That responsibility uh, obviously is magnified in the devastation that has been suffered so near us. It's characteristic of the American people to mm. help others. In so all these are, are prescripted in and the event the that, uh, that they themselves need to sustain this effort as it goes forward. There are going to be many difficult and they days continue ahead. the government by having so, him saying things, so many making speeches, appearing in, the in public, all in the studio, food is scarce, and uh, so playing is at a particular It'll date in the future. To this one was smuggled out. Points so that we can ensure that resources are delivered safely. 21st of December 2012, after an asteroid attack, they're all underground, we'll safe, you're all dead on top, or if you are alive, you're dying of radiation, because they've started World War III. Who have moved so swiftly. Our civilians and staff can many of them prevent suffered that. their own losses in this and tragedy. And those members of search and rescue teams from Florida and California and Virginia who've left their homes and their families behind to help others. Uh, to all of now, them, I want you to know that you demonstrate the courage Muhammad and decency Rincon. of the American people. Back we are extraordinarily Bible proud of you. I also want to thank the American that, people uh, more broadly. Everyone These good and evil will be alive. Shown extraordinary to experience compassion. judgment. And tomorrow I will be meeting with President Clinton and President George W. Bush here at the White House Skull to discuss bones. how to enlist and help the American people in this recovery and rebuilding effort going forward. It was an emotional moment. And this president, seeing the devastation around him, passed this message to the American people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pure Hollywood bullshit. Hasn't happened yet. And I'm stopping it from happening. Millions of innocent Americans lost their jobs, their homes, their life savings. A tragedy from which we're still fighting to recover. Now, our friends down in Tampa. Point the southern shaft, this one. It is impossible for this man not to know about my work because he's using it. Points to Beta Essa Minor. But they didn't have much to say about how they'd make it right. Very curious thing, especially since these shafts actually do not exit on the outside of the pyramid. The ones from the King's Chamber do, but these ones don't. And uh, back in 1993, a German robotics engineer, Rudolf Gantenbrink, sent a little robot up that shaft, and 165 feet up the shaft, the robot came to this door with two metal handles. Rudolf Gantenbrink was immediately banned from doing any further work in Egypt and was sent away. Uh, the project was taken over by the Egyptian government. Uh, some years later, uh, Zahi, Zahi Hawass um, sent another robot up the shaft with a mission to drill through that door and find out what was on the other side. And uh, there we go, there's the drill, there's the door, there's the hole that they made. You know what they found on the other side? 
a space and another door. <laughs> it's like an invitation. Search me. The pyramid is saying, search me. But I'm not going to make it easy for you. You're really going to have to figure this thing out. We still don't know what's at the end of that shaft. Okay, so we're going to come out of the Queen's Chamber, back along the horizontal corridor. Now we're looking up the Grand Gallery, 153 feet long, 28 feet high. This is called the Corbel Vault. Each level protrudes slightly over the level below it and narrows up uh, towards the ceiling. Well, these blocks weigh about 70 tons each. They're laid at an angle of 26 degrees. You can't get a sheet of paper between the joints. They're unbelievably pre precise. It's like uh, being compared to opticians' work on a scale of acres. Uh, an astonishing feat of construction. The work of giants, really. At the top of the Grand Gallery, work of giants. an entrance to the King's Chamber. This is the Palestine. King's Chamber here. And above the King's Chamber, not known until the early 19th century, are one, two, three, four, five more chambers. And getting into those chambers is really fun. <laughs> I'll come to that in a moment. Five wives. But let's, uh, let's first of all go uh, into the King's Chamber. Uh, and this is, this is what the King's Chamber looks like. There, those are those shafts again. Uh, this is the northern shaft, the southern shaft's on this side. Uh, one pointing to Orion's belt, and the other again pointing to one of the second polar stars. It's a beautiful geometric room. It's made of granite blocks. Great Pyramid is a limestone monument. These granite blocks were brought about 500 miles from Aswan. They were lifted to a height of hundreds of feet above the ground and put in, into position in this extraordinary chamber uh, in the heart of the pyramid. There is a sarcophagus in it. I and my colleagues believe that this is uh, not a sarcophagus that ever contained the body of the pharaoh Khufu or of any pharaoh. Uh, we think that it was involved in in some kind of process, some kind of initiation, I'm going to talk about that uh, a, a little bit. But because there is a sarcophagus in it, immediately the assumption has been made that this must have been the burial chamber of uh, Khufu. Um, been a let's look at this setup again here. The king's chamber, the so-called relieving chambers uh, up above it. Rather similar to the jet pillar, the symbolic backbone of Cyrus, which is a symbol of resurrection and rebirth in the ancient Egyptian religion. It seems that they were creating a, a symbol of resurrection, the of, uh, of rebirth within the, within the Great Pyramid. To get into those rooms, here's what you do. You put a ladder 30 feet high up against this wall, and you lean it up against that side there, and there's a little hole just a bit wider than me, which fortunately a rope now hangs out of and you grab hold of that rope, haul your body into it, pull yourself through, and then you get into a narrow tunnel, and that leads you into the first, and um, eventually into the, all five uh, of these chambers. And I'll just take you to the top chamber. Uh, that's that one up there. And um, again, these extraordinary, huge blocks of stone. These are in the range of 100 tons each, which form the floor. Uh, of, uh, of this chamber and indeed all the other chambers again have these gigantic blocks of stone which, which, uh, which are almost impossible uh, to move really but there they are more graffiti inside Sister M.T. Martin 6th of February 1915 uh, oh there's me, <laughs> me with one of my kids Layla um, uh, again just to show you the, the size and the, and the scale of the thing um, we'll go back to the pyramids. Here is the only evidence that Egyptologists are able to cite which connects the Great Pyramid to the Pharaoh Khufu. Uh, and that is a cartouche which appears to say the name Khufu but is found in that very topmost relieving chamber that I, that I showed you. Uh, it's round about over here somewhere. And um, there are no other inscriptions whatsoever inside the Great Pyramid, not one. Uh, but this, uh, this graffiti, as it's referred to, um, is supposed to be what's called a quarry mark that was put on the blocks by the gangs of construction workers who were quarrying out the blocks that would be built into the Great Pyramid. And they said, this is Khufu's block, or something, something like that. 
It's not very convincing evidence that the pyramid was built by Khufu or for Khufu. There is a there is a hint of doubt over the authenticity of the cartouche itself. Could it have been forged by Howard Weiss, who found it in the early 19th century? Um, but one thing's for sure, if Khufu was the builder of the pyramid, he had a pretty small ego for such a big monument. This is the only statue of Khufu that's ever survived. It's about two inches high. And, uh, you know, you would have thought he'd have put his name all over this thing instead of just on some bit of graffiti up in a block in a chamber that nobody's ever going to see. But he didn't. It's absolutely bare. There are no texts, nothing in there that tells you what's going on. However, if you go down to Saqqara, about 15 miles south of Giza, you will come to a group of pyramids dating from the 5th and 6th dynasties, not the 4th dynasty, which this one supposedly dates to. And those pyramids are filled with texts. Now, I'm just showing this overlay. Actually, I'm going I'm to give away Santa's secret. She did this by accident. <laughs> Because Santa t we were at Giza, Santa took a shot of the pyramids of Giza, then we went down to Saqqara and we went into the pyramid of Unas, and Santa took a photograph of the pyramid of Unas, and we got this double exposure, where the, the pyramid of Unas is overlaid on the, on the Giza pyramids. And here are the so-called pyramid texts, the star-covered ceiling of the pyramid of Unas, and the pyramid texts on the walls. And uh, these uh, pyramid texts are the earliest surviving recensions of what we now know as the books of the dead, the ancient Egyptian books of the dead, and they concern the mystery of life and death, and what it is... Well, you haven't mentioned this, so, uh, They're very deep, they're very profound. It's part of the conspiracy. Um, and they are... It, it, it seems to me that they were putting in right... Now, this is the most incredible thing here, where they are actually... Uh, he, if he was dead right now, they've still got all his speeches ready to go for the next four years, which is war. This is insane, but this is what they believe. So I tried to fax this, or rather Ash did, to Iran, to Press TV, and uh, she was hopeless to do it in here. Why? I want Asia to see it, not the Iranians. The Iranian will simply be denied. So we upload it. This is the most important part. The prophet, peace be upon him, said, Even if only one day is left before the day of judgment, God will expand that day to accommodate the kingdom of a person from my household who will be called by my name he will fill the earth with peace and justice as it will have been full of injustice and tyranny by then. And Jesus will assist him. obvious The UBM after the M. The 
A after the H. The M before the A. Another M. An A. And a D. <coughs> I thought it was obvious, but uh, I suppose a broad forehead and a big nose. Well, I think it's perfect. So there it is. Moment. As the tomb was sealed shut.